Hi, today I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. First, I want to go over the shooting process. Now this is a heavily backlit scene and you're going to have to capture as much dynamic range as you can. The way that I do this is by shooting on a tripod and using automatic exposure bracketing. So you basically just need a proper exposure for all the details in the sky and then one with all the details in the car. And then we're just going to take both of these photos and merge them together in Photoshop. And when shooting a car, you're going to want to remember to use a polarizer and get a couple different rotations um, from each bracket. So you can see here, this is the one for the left side of the car. And then I have another one here for the top side. And we're going to take both of those for this exposure of the car. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I do any adjustments to the raw file right here in Lightroom. And usually I'll go through any exposure issues the white balance and the lens corrections and then I'll take both of my car shots and sync them together. And now that we have that all done we're just gonna select each of our exposures for the car and the background and then right click edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now here I'm gonna use the best layer that I can to cut out the car from the background and this one has plenty of separation so I'll be able to go around it with the pen tool and cut out the entire thing. That way I can make adjustments from the car and the background completely separately. Now that we have this selection made, I'm going to create a mask just so I can have the car by itself. And I'm going to duplicate the mask just so that I have it on both layers that I'm going to use for the car and so I can pick and choose which parts of the polarization that I want to have on each part of the car. Now here I'm going to start erasing from the mask of the polarization from the top part of the car. Um, that's going to allow me to cut all the reflections on the left side and you can pick and choose where you want these. So if you want to add them and take them back out that way you can see where you want reflections and where you don't. Now I'm going to make another selection here just for the light coming through the windows because it's going to be a little bit off hue and it's going to be different exposure than your background layer. Now I've painted all of these selections into their own mask on this group and it has a curves layer and a hue saturation layer and that's so you can adjust the color and the exposure from all the light coming through the windows because it's going to look a little bit messed up if you don't change it. You could see from before it was a little bit green whereas the background was a little yellow. It just looks less distracting when you have it matching your background layer. Once you have your subject properly exposed, you're going to have to just recover the rest of the shadows from any of the other parts in the photo. Um, here I'm just going to paint in from the overexposed shot um, parts of the foreground and the background that were underexposed. 
And to do that, I'm gonna use a very large 0% hardness brush, and I'm just gonna paint with the edges so you can barely see the transitions between the overexposed and the underexposed. Going over some of the final touches here, I'm just going to do some dodging and burning over parts of the cars. Um, I'm going to mainly bring the exposure up on some shadows and um, then I'm going to accentuate some of the highlights in the body of the car. Um, you're going to see that I'll bring out the highlights in the red and um, the highlights in the bottom of the car here on the skirt. I'm going to go around the whole car from anything that's underexposed it needs to come up a little bit. And then along the body of the car, I'm going to increase the shadows where there are shadows and increase the highlights where there are highlights, just so you can see the definition a little bit more in the body lines. In my personal taste, I like to usually keep the reflections on the wheels, especially black ones, just because you lose so much definition in them. But in these ones, I wanted to cut it down just a little bit because there was already enough reflections on it and it started to get a little bit distracting. Now that everything is pretty evenly exposed, I'm just going to bring it into Color Effects Pro and do a couple contrast adjustments and saturation adjustments, and then that's it. That's the final image. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If there's any other questions you might have, just leave them in the comments below, and I will try to make another video here soon. So thanks, like, and subscribe.